Hi, Saj Hussain here, and I'm not sure if this video is going to be a good idea, but I've decided to do a vlog just for you. But whoa, 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 whoa. Let me explain first of all. It's going to be a pilot, so what's that mean? We're only going to run for a few episodes. So I'm going to do a few episodes, we'll see how it goes. You know, I'm going to look for your feedback, whether you enjoy it, you're learning something from it, you're finding it useful, and then we'll take it from there. And but also, if you don't like, you need to give me your feedback and let me know. You know, I'm a big boy, I can take it. So why am I doing this? Well, you know, I feel I'm in a fortunate position right now. I feel absolutely blessed. I have this amazing life, you know, but I've struggled. It wasn't always like this. I've been in property nearly 15 years now. And during that time, you know, especially at the beginning when I started, I really struggled. I started with no money. And I just had a burning desire to succeed and find a way in property, not only just to have a better life for myself, but to create generational wealth. And during that time, I went through various different strategies and techniques I learned, whether it's buy to let, it's flipping properties, uh, it's converting properties to apartments, uh, small HMOs, larger HMOs, professional HMOs, building houses, even quite a range of strategies over that time. But here's the one thing that I learned that stuck with me all that time. And in property, the only certainty is constant change. And that has stuck with me all the way through. So what does that mean? Why is it even relevant? Well, constant change is relevant because in the property market, people talk about doing strategies and the right strategies. Well, actually, it's not only about the right strategies, it's about the timing of the market, using the right strategy for the right time, depending on where you are in the country as well, because there's micro markets that operate. And so, you know, during this time, I've learned the hard way that actually you can't just have one strategy and you stick to it. You need to evolve over time. So right now, you know, when I'm recording this vlog, it's the 24th of June, 2020, the first vlog I'm doing. This day will go down in history. Well, we've yet to see that. Uh, so yesterday, Boris announced that the social distancing measures will reduce down to one meter. So as we're coming out of lockdown and things are starting to ease into normality, you get a lot of people sharing their knowledge and the experience and some experts and some so-called experts. And you know, there's a lot of hype and BS out there as well. So if you've been following me for any period of time, you know what you get with me is the real thing. You get true transparency in terms of what I'm doing, how I'm doing things, where I believe things are going, how the market is working, and also what doesn't work, which is really important because I see too many people trying things that just don't work and they struggle, they spend huge amounts of money, be it with trainers or gurus or whatever it might be, and they just don't get anywhere, they don't get the results. And that's because they're not understand the timing of the market. So with these vlogs, I wanna share with you what I'm doing, what I'm up to, what my uh, intentions are in terms of going forward, how I adapt with the market as the market changes, and sharing that with you too. So if you want to be part of the journey, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, whack that notification bell so that you're notified when the new videos are released. And I look forward to sharing this journey with you and let's get this show on the road. Saj, lovely day, I'm sweltering here, but uh, you need to tell me where we're going. Uh, it is a beautiful day. Uh, in fact, it's uh, 24th of June today. Uh, which is uh, one of the longest days of the year and probably one of the hottest days of the year as well. Uh, it's 31 degrees right now outside, so absolutely boiling, uh, a beautiful day. We're heading towards um, uh, the Black Country. If you're, if you're not from the Midlands and you're wondering where that is, it's, uh, it's kind of northwest of Birmingham. Uh, I've no idea why it's called the, uh, the Black Country. I think it's something to do with Queen Victoria went through it many years ago and it was kind of full of soot and black chimneys i don't know maybe if you know you can kind of comment and let let me know but we're heading towards the black country right now because i'm being interviewed this afternoon uh by uh, gov shergill he's uh, got a podcast that he's running so we're going to go and talk about property um and so if you've got any questions uh, that you want me answering for you uh make sure you put them in the comment section because we'll be running the uh the ask sag live q a on monday evenings at 8 30 p.m uh, again, so on, on the various social media platforms. So that's that's kind of where we're going. I mean, uh, I've, I've been investing in Birmingham for, for quite a few years. And when I first started, I started looking at the cheapest possible areas I could find. In fact, I went to Stoke-on-Trent, which is 
north of the north of Birmingham because properties there were very cheap. Uh, in fact, you could buy properties for fifteen and twenty thousand pounds there. Would you believe? Um, and I soon found out why because uh, it's not the kind of place you wanted to live. Uh, and then I started looking a little bit more local. The market changed, and Black Country was one of my favourite places because it's it's an area where there's a lot of lower price property and there's room for growth. It's very close to Birmingham. It's easy to to, to get to. So these are the surrounding towns around Birmingham, uh, particularly. Uh, and I remember the best deal I ever did uh, during the last recession, uh, kind of ten plus years ago now, when I bought a block of three flats uh, for seventy-five thousand pounds. That's twenty-five thousand pound a flat. Would you believe? That's, um, that's just crazy. I mean, today they're probably worth £100,000 each, uh, those uh, those apartments. Um, and that was probably one of the best deals I ever did. Uh, and I think it's because of the location, uh, because there's an opportunity for growth there. And also um, because it's uh, about uh, circumstances. And maybe that's a story for another day. I'll explain um, how I managed to, to structure, that, uh, structure that deal and get it for such an amazing price. Hey, it's Andy Sane here. I'm here with the amazing Gov Shergill of the Property Newbies <laughs> podcast. So we've just finished at uh, Gov's interview uh, and podcast, which was fantastic, actually, uh, apart from the fact it was absolutely boiling. Um, very warm. So we're just heading back now. We're going to pop into uh, one of the project renovation we're doing at the moment we just need to finalize some decisions around the kitchen uh, there i uh, nipped into magnet this morning to just look at some color so just need to make some final decisions there um, and then uh, heading back over to the uh, office and the rest of the day with the family enjoying some of this nice weather so uh, with uh, with Gov, it was a really interesting and enjoyable uh, interview because he's asking some meaningful questions, which I always enjoy, rather than just superficial ones sometimes um, uh, people have. But, you know, everyone's at a different place in terms of how they ask their questions. So one of the things we were talking about, which I thought would be really interesting to share just now, is when um, you're working with investors and the question of security comes up, so uh, whether you're the person investing in a deal or whether you're the person looking to raise money from somebody else and, and investment. So I, I think about it in, in kind of four four different levels. The first is uh, a little bit like the when the bank lends you money for a particular deal and uh, uh, for a purchase of a property, typically they'll give you about 75% of the uh, of the purchase price um, and then you've got to put the other 25% in or whether you borrow the money privately 75% loan to value that's the most secure money on that particular deal then the other 25% or the deposit bit if you like or the uh, the other bit of equity whatever you want to call it um, that part uh, is a little bit less secure than the first one so now you've utilized 100% of the equity. So put it in context of numbers, let's say it's a 100,000 pound purchase, 75,000 pounds goes towards the lender that's put the, uh, uh, that amount in as a charge, first charge to them. Second charge, for example, goes to the person put the next 25,000 pounds in. Now you might still need some additional money beyond that if you're doing this completely using other people's money. So you'll have some money for the renovation, potentially even other costs, legal costs, holding costs, stamp duty, etc., etc. So there may be, say, you know, for argument's sake, another twenty-five thousand pounds that you need. Now this is beyond the equity. So in terms of risk point of view, it sits at the highest or the higher level of risk. And then, of course, at the end of it, the intention is that you'll make some profit. For example, if it was a flip, let's say you were selling for £150,000. Once you've paid uh, the initial bits of uh, money back, the £75,000, the £25,000, the other £25,000, you're left with about £25,000 profit. You've still got to pay your investors um, whatever arrangement and agreement you have. So when you're speaking to somebody, whether you're investing with them, uh, i.e. putting money with them, or you're looking to raise money from somebody, and when security, the question of security comes up, firstly, you should always try and understand what their understanding of that is and what they might be looking for. And then think about it in this context of the four different levels. What is it that they're going to get? So oh, a little useful tip there for you. See you again in a short while. So we're just at one of the projects at the moment uh, where I was trying to sort out the kitchens uh, this morning. Uh, so just checking on what the final design is here. So uh, this is extension you've built on this house. This house is uh, being prepared to sell um, and it will go on the market around 400,000. Um, 
it's in a, a nice part of Birmingham, um, where hopefully it should sell quite easily at that sort of figure. Um, it's, a, it's a Victorian terrace, um, so we just really modernised it, making it a much nicer, uh, nicer modern living style of property. So as I said, this will just be the kitchen and a little bit of dining space um, here. So let me just quickly talk you through what we've got planned here. So in terms of the kitchen, uh, which has been ordered today, um, we'll have a tall larder unit here with the oven, we'll have a wall unit there and a base unit here, a uh, wall unit and a base unit, just kind of fairly standard cupboards. We've got a gas hob here with a black gloss extractor and then a drawer pack underneath. Now these drawers uh, at the top will be a light grey and the ones at the bottom will be a dark slate uh, grey. So a lot of the theme in the house is kind of uh, shades of grey, not quite 50 shades of grey, but shades of grey. Um, so here we'll contrast it rather than having the, the light colours at the top and the dark at the bottom, we'll kind of swap them around. Um, and again, we've got a couple of units along this side. We'll have uh, the boiler housed within the unit. Uh, set of drawers there, uh, sink here, set of drawers here. We've integrated a uh, washing machine, uh, dishwasher here as well. And we've got a nice uh, area here for the, uh, uh, for the dining table here. So um, hopefully in a few weeks time I'll be able to show you this project finished as it goes on to the market ready to sell. Uh, there's a little bit of work still left. The decorators finishing off the decorating, the kitchen needs to be finished, the tiling is Nearly done now, we've just uh, been uh, working on the tiling this week. The bathrooms are almost finished as well. So we'll do another video uh, in a few uh, weeks, hopefully, with, uh, with this finished. Just uh, been back to the office, a uh, quick meeting at the office to catch up with a few things. Uh, winding down for the rest of the day now. Um, recently, I was blessed with a son-in-law, uh, Hamza. So I, I'm going to meet uh, Hamza now and my daughter Zara for dinner with them. This evening um, so if you've enjoyed the vlog please hit the subscribe button uh, make sure you hit the notification bell in fact smack the notification bell um, so that you're notified when the next video is released and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.